6.30 and we're off. And uh, today is the one I think I mentioned yesterday off to Tunku, which is this, in the wrong weather, it's a horrible anchorage because there's no protection. So we've no idea what it'll be like in at this time of year. We did have a squall come through last night. Liz slept through it, of course, but uh, yeah, I was up and I could see, uh, I think Daryl on Freysenay was up as well. I mean, the boats are fine, you know, there was, there's nothing wrong with the boats, good anchorage. I mean, look, you're surrounded by mangroves and a little sort of estuary, so no problem there. But um, it did, I think, I think it came up from the south, southeast. I think I was in denial last night, but if we get another school like that tonight at this new anchorage, it's not going to be nice. So it's still very cloudy. I mean, it's the cloudiest it's been since we departed, actually pretty grim out there at the moment but let's hope it brightens up just like my mood will after my first coffee today we're leaving Tambasan we have nothing but storms all the way around us this is supposed to be beautiful blue sky azure water cruise around the coast of Sabah turning out to be a bit more rainy and windy than we thought, never mind. Apparently last night there was a squall, a storm that went on for a bit. I slept right through it. <laughs> anyway, Jamie lost no time in telling me about it this morning. So today we go around the easternmost tip. It's the bit that's closest to the Philippines and the dodgy piratey area. So we go right round that and then we go south and back inland, so back west a little bit, to our next anchorage, about 50 miles. Let's hope that the weather clears up a bit before then. Let's hope the sea looks a bit more fun, because uh, although I did try fishing yesterday, I didn't catch anything, I did it for about an hour or so, didn't get anything. I'm gonna try when we get around the corner here, because there's usually, we keep reasonably close to a headland, there's usually some fish lurking there. So we'll give that a go. So as we've been, as we're motoring around the bend to our next anchorage, I've been looking at options because the next anchorage could be really exposed, we're not sure, and if it is too exposed, we won't be able to stay there tonight, and there aren't many options. We could go all the way to Lahadatu, that takes us completely the wrong way, and that's a lot further to go. Or we miss out the next, next anchorage, and we go south to Buhedulang. But that will have us arriving there at about nine or 10 at night, so not ideal. Anyway, so while I was looking, I was checking out some of the other places, and these places are all out, you know, they're out of the question because they're potentially so dangerous, but my God, there's some beautiful islands in this sea. Um, there's this one very long island, and then it's got um, a stretch of water in the middle of it, a strait, and then there's a huge great reef on the other side. But it's in, it's in the Philippines, it's called, hang on, I'll tell you, Cebutu Island. And to its west is an island without a name, but I think it's probably part of it. Anyway, what an incredible place that could be. And we could spend months, possibly years, sailing in this area, looking at all these places, but with Joe Low and the piracy, and um, it's just not gonna happen. Come on, Philippines, come on, Malaysia, make it happen. We want to sail around this area. It could be so exciting. In terms of security, we're now at the most crucial part of the journey. And that is the easternmost point of the tip of Sabah. And in fact, we are so close to the dangerous uh, territory that we can actually see one of the islands over the horizon. Unfortunately, we have two and a half knots of current against us. So we're not even doing three knots at the moment. Uh, the wind decided to change direction. We had some wind with us, but it's uh, it sort of died away and then it's just flapping around. And so no one's really got their sails out at the moment to give us a little push. So we're just gonna have to persevere at the moment and hope that perhaps this current slows down as we get around the corner. This has just caught something. <laughs> we are literally around the very eastern point and we're going through the hardy patch, it's called, or the patches, 
and these are overfalls as the strong current from the south pushes up we're back against two, over two knots of current uh, but of course you've got this massive water coming from the northeast on the way down and this is creating these overfalls eddies they're also called and um, I think I better put the camera away because Liz have you still got it? Oh, Liz has possibly lost her lure. It was a log, there's a bit of debris around here, not too much, but I think she's lost her lure. That's the second lure she's lost in three days. It's not very good, is it? It's not the best place to be catching fish, to be honest, because uh, the boat's sort of being pushed around quite a bit. Uh, we could probably sail through here, but uh, I've decided just to keep the engine on because we're gonna be hitting this uh, current, well, we already are hitting this current, which is really, pushing hard against us and of course from a security point of view we need to maintain our speed that's the that's the important thing to remember we could quite happily sail down here at two and a half three knots but we want to limit the amount of time that we spend in these waters on 1500 meters of new monofilament and spent a whole day sorting it all out doing special FG knot on both my reels so that it's all beautifully connected and then two days ago we lost a barracuda okay you could understand that mm, uh, but we lost that on the boat we're fiddling around and then just now I the line snapped again so I thought what's going on you just take the line and pull and it breaks Obviously, in, not all the way through. In certain places, it does, and uh, it just means the whole thing is spoiled. I've been online to check it, and it says if it's been sitting on the, in a shop for two or three years on its drum, it, it can corrode. So, got to take it all off. Not for putting Liz in the way. Yeah. Well, despite Liz losing her line, she's still got the yo-yo out, and we've just seen the first sign of life. Some fishermen in their funny little perambulating type single motorboat type things. I don't know what you call them actually, skiffs I suppose. Yeah. And um, so they've just come across and one of them actually came behind us and Liz shouted, show them this, show them this. And she meant the yo-yo that's out the back <laughs> with the fishing line on and sure enough we held it up and he immediately stopped. And as Liz says, it's something that is it. all fishermen around the world understand what it means to have a line out the back and everyone knows what a yo-yo is. So. Uh, that was very good. Anyway, we've, we're now going along the east coast. It's, there's not much wind at all. Uh, so we are literally just motoring now. We don't even have any sails out. Uh, but it's actually quite nice motoring weather. It's flat calm again. Uh, there's no sun, so it's quite cool. And what's nice is that we can see this uh, coastline here, which is presumably ancient rainforest. Now we've got some dead trees that line the coastline and in fact that's even on the charts it says dead trees on the charts sadly of course we know that literally 100 meters behind this coastline is just acre upon acre upon thousands of acres of palm plantation so we're quite fortunate that we uh, we don't have the drone up or we're not above tree height we could just get this uh, lovely coastline here so anyway it looks like we'll be motoring for the rest of the afternoon now because uh, there's no wind uh, due in until this evening actually, uh, which should make this anchorage interesting. What do you think of this one, Jamie? Well, it makes up for you losing your uh, your lure earlier, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Uh, so, yeah, in fact, you only noticed it when you were trying to take in a line or something, and we realised he'd actually been sitting on the end of the line for ages. So when we pulled him in, he was pretty much dead. So there was no fighting, which was which was good. And um, yeah, another healthy mackerel. Mm. Bigger than the last one? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Of course, what Jamie means is that uh, I noticed it as I was putting out my re-spool reel on my line, on my fishing rod, 
did another FG knot, put the old mono back on, put the lure on, was just about to put it out and I thought, oh hang on, we've got something on the yo-yo. Uh, Always worth putting the yo-yo out, isn't it? So that's the second fish we've caught on a yo-yo this trip. Who needs a proper rod, eh? And the other thing, of course, is that this one was caught with my new bright pink lure. <laughs> it's all about the pink at the moment. That was a nice treat for Liz after her depressing start today. I could tell she was really put out by that. That was, what, 1,400 metres, did she say? Of supposedly new mono. Completely uh, worthless, not usable at all. So that's good. Beautiful mackerel. And a little bit of sunshine as well, which is which is lovely. And look, the sea has gone blue, a bluey green. It's that proper sea colour rather than grey. Sun's gone in, sail's come out. I mentioned two types of inhabitants earlier, didn't I? I talked about the palm plantations and how, of course, they employ a lot of people here. But then the other side is the uh, the local indigenous uh, fishing fishing villages, and you can see the fishermen are all they're all just sitting out at uh, at anchor, I suppose. They're in their little uh, they're not dugouts, although I think some of them are actually, but uh, they're very very simple. Uh, one-man canoe kayak style boats but they have these outriggers on them sort of Indonesian style and uh, you can see them just bobbing around at, uh, it's coming up to sunset and we've got this incredibly atmospheric storm building up all the way behind me you can see it runs all the way along the coast here it's quite dramatic uh, we've got some big mountains ahead of us and the, the clouds sort of rolling down on them and I think we're going to get absolutely pissed on very, very soon. We're about 10 minutes from dropping the hook, so I hope that we uh, get the hook down before all of this comes in. So after all that talk yesterday about rocky, rolly anchorages and worrying about squalls and all that kind of business, turns out this was actually the flattest anchorage we've stayed in so far on this trip. Bearing in mind, of course, that is all open sea there. We're completely exposed. But um, I guess this is also one of the reasons why they do choose this anchorage is that in the right conditions, it's very good. The main reason actually is because there is an ESCOM base somewhere on the coast here. Um, and this morning we got a little lie in. We got half hour lie in because we're not leaving till seven because we're only going can you see it? It's Bohe Dulang, one of the greatest anchorages in the world, although we won't be anchoring in the same place as we did last time, uh, but you, you can see it from here. So it's a, a short hop of only uh, 30 odd miles today. Drive over. I want to have this discussion again about the potential for tourism in this area. Uh, it's, a, it's a favorite topic of mine because, you know, as a cruiser, you get to see the coastline as it, as it currently is, and you just think this has so much potential. I mean, look at this whole area. This is basically, you're surrounded from Bohe Dulang all the way around to St. Porna, and then the mainline coast of, of Sabra itself. And this is, perfect cruising territory. Okay, at the moment we don't have much wind, but on the whole, it's, I mean, there's nothing to beat it really. And yet, very few boats are here. And of course, this is for a very obvious reason, and that is the uh, security issue. But I think it's such a shame because when you look at Semporna, Semporna is a diving uh, hub uh, because you're surrounded by dive sites. And so Semporna is the town that everyone comes to to set off on their diving holidays. Well, if you're, allowed, if you're allowing divers to go out and uh, be in these waters, then you know what's wrong with cruisers being here as well? 
there's a possibility that you could set up marinas. Now I was thinking about this. I guess the people with the most money would be the palm plantation owners. And uh, as you saw yesterday, they have built out uh, docks out into the sea. Um, if anyone's got the money to develop a marina, then it's going to be the palm plantation owners. Of course, there's a bit of a moral dilemma there, but that aside, there is no reason why you couldn't have marinas and uh, commercial boat facilities, or sorry, leisure boat facilities along this coastline. Um, but as I said, it's all to do with the security issue. And uh, I think it's such a shame because not only this coastline, but as Liz was alluding to the other day, you know, some of those Filipino islands that are just over the horizon look absolutely stunning. It, it, it just would be perfect. And I, I think it's a, it's a real shame because obviously cruisers would benefit from this area and obviously uh, the locals as well. Well, I'm happy to report that we are sailing, so engine off. Batteries didn't get much of a charge, but we take every opportunity when we can. And we were just a little bit ahead of the fleet anyway, so uh, I think we're now sailing at between four, four and a half knots, which is very pleasant. I always had a vision of us sailing towards Bohe Dulang for some reason. As I was saying earlier, look, conditions are just perfect. Bit of a current coming in from the west, but otherwise, Good sailing. Day, I don't know what day, day, don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know. but all I know is that we're on our way to Bohe Dulang, one of my favourite places in the entire world. I angled time and time again for us to stay for two nights here, but apparently we've got to catch a train. Oh God, deadlines mean that we have to get move on to Tuao, which means only one night here, but we're going to make the most of it. We, we set off reasonably early so we just have the most rest of the afternoon here um, and then off again in the morning but this is beautiful we're sailing we're sailing it's just lovely the other boats over over my shoulder behind me they've just seen some dolphins i've got two lines out so if there are dolphins it means there are fish so cross everything let's see if we get another fish yeah just loving the peace and quiet so i am now going to zip it thank god for that Scrolling through my map on Navionics, going right down, going in to see if anything we need to know, and uh, a little red dot appeared, so I opened it up. This is what it says generic information, report attack information, kidnapped two crew on fishing vessel on the 10th of the 9th of 2018. So, three and a half years ago, there was an attack kind of just here, and it doesn't say what nationality is or anything like that, but two crew were taken. So that does just show you that this is an area of concern, uh, sadly, because it's also an area of fantastic beauty. But we're staying here tonight, we've got ESCOM, ESCOM with us, so we're feeling pretty happy about that. <laughs> 